As construction job sites aim to become greener, additive manufacturing enters the equation. Oak Ridge National Laboratory is looking to help. For those of you who might not know about Oak Ridge, it is one of the U.S. Department of Energy Science and Energy Laboratories, and it conducts basic and applied research to deliver solutions, in this case, additive manufacturing. To tell us all about it, please welcome Bill Peter, Director of the Manufacturing Demonstration Facility at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So, Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peggy. I'm glad to be here. So, Bill, can you explain to us what you guys are doing and what is advanced manufacturing in the facility? Yeah, so the manufacturing demonstration facility was set up by the Department of Energy Advanced Manufacturing Office. It's at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, one of the nation's uh, largest uh, Department of Energy labs. And at the laboratory, we look at uh, advancements in materials, in uh, uh, nuclear systems, in bi biological systems, uh, computation, uh, as well as characterization. The manufacturing demonstration facility was really taking those strengths and starting to look at how we could apply those to the big problem sets within advanced manufacturing activities, things like atom manufacturing and carbon fiber and composites. So why is that important today? What actually are you, we trying to accomplish by doing that? Well, additive manufacturing has quite a bit of ability in changing the way that we make things. Uh, and that could be for improved efficiencies or light weighting of, of parts. But one of the big, big difficulties is looking at things like deposition rates. How do we make these systems faster and bigger? Uh, how can we look at new materials and increasing the materials? As well as how do you qualify a part? How do I know that the material that you make is good? Uh, and so that's really where we can start to take some of these science tools, the characterization capabilities and, and the materials development that we do and computation and really start putting a whole new system of how we uh, advance manufacturing for us. And as I hear you talk about these things, I can see uh, so many benefits for the construction industry. What are you seeing? Yeah, so in construction, one of the, the uh, interests are things like hydraulics. Can I put hydraulic systems directly into the components that I, I print. Uh, so instead of uh, traditional means where I would uh, go through and fabricate through castings or forgings uh, and create that part, I could actually build the part with hydraulics directly in, in the part and therefore uh, uh, decrease the overall opportunity for leakages from hoses, uh, as well as look at efficiencies as I go through and look at hydraulic systems. Another area is the idea of lightweighting. The fact that as we go through in 3D print, you only print where I want to print. And therefore, I can go through and actually decrease the overall weight for a component. I don't have to lay down material everywhere, but only where it's strategic. I think the last one really has to do uh, with, with innovative uh, design and things like heat efficiency and how you can change the way that you go through and look at heat flow and how I can go through and actually become much more energy efficient in my overall system. Are we starting to see the construction industry use advanced manufacturing in ways that they might not have thought of, let's say, a few years ago to what they could do today or what we're even seeing maybe in five years from now? Yeah, so we're already in the construction industry starting to see areas whereby advanced prototyping, we're very quickly able to go through and fabricate systems and get evaluation. Uh, the structural property sets that we need are something that we're still working on and will come with time. But the idea, though, of being able to print really big parts uh, at fast rates that are meaningful for the construction industry, that's a big area that Oak Ridge has spent a lot of time in both composites as well as in metals. So what kind of things do you envision printing that you could see that we'll be using on the job site in the future? Well, I think Amy was a, a really nice example. Amy was an additive manufactured excavator. And as we went through, we showed a couple different areas that, that we went through and produced on, on that excavator. We, we printed the stick uh, where we were able, we used a metal printer that was on a MIG welder to print a, a, a little over five foot stick. Uh, we also printed a cab. Now the stick was printed with the actual hydraulic systems into it. The cab was developed in a scenario, and it was with actual various different universities. The one that 
won the design challenge was University of Illinois. It was designed so that it could take rollover, but also was designed so that it was as lightweight as it possibly could be for the excavator. And then uh, we also went through and 3D printed a radiator uh, where you could go through and look at the efficiencies of heat exchange and really be able to use, instead of orthogonal passageways and straight pipettes, uh, really go through and, and see how you could uh, obtain the maximum uh, flow and heat exchange through through the, the radiator. Um, the big area, though, that I see going forward is in dyes, tools, and molds, where by going through, uh, the United States lost 37% of the dye tool and mold industry in less than a decade. And if we can go through and very rapidly make tools, then we could disrupt some of these lead times and some of the cost scenarios we see when it comes to tooling. So we're really seeing advanced technology making things so energy efficient, so productive. I mean, so really the sky's the limit on what we could do with some of this, right? Yeah, as time goes on, uh, we see that these systems are getting faster, they're getting bigger, and they're also becoming more efficient as we start to better understand uh, the systems and how we go through and deposit uh, the materials. One of the things I'm really excited about is the idea that we can control microstructure as we print parts. Uh, one of the things that as you lay down material, it's time over, it, it's over time you can change the process parameters. Uh, I can change that effectively to actually control at a microstructure level within the materials. That means I can completely change design. It's not just from geometry, but it could actually be from the way that I process the materials. I affect the way that it performs. And that's Bill, very I, unique. I think that's so exciting. Thank you for being with us in our innovation and technology for today. I really am excited about what the future is for all, anybody who's in construction or any industry for that matter. Well, thank you very much, Peggy. I appreciate being here and always glad to talk about the activities we're doing here at the Manufacturing Demonstration Facility. All right, thank you. Thank you.